Warning, today's deck might cause some salt in your playgroup. Use it at your own risk. So welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today we're going over the Grand Larceny Precon from Outlaws of Thunder Junction. And I felt it appropriate to dig out my Kirby shirt and wear it today since he's all about stealing his opponent's abilities to use them. And that's what Gaunt is going to do for us in the deck. We are going to be stealing their cards and casting them for ourselves. So it felt appropriate. Now, I have said in the past with theft cards, please be aware some people do not like you handling their cards. And this could definitely is not very good for a spell table game. However, if you're going to use it, use the rule zero conversation. Let them know what you're going to be doing. Have fun with the deck. Treat their cards nicely when you handle them like they were your own. And please remember to give them back anything that you've pilfered from them so we don't have accidental real life theft in awkward situations later. With that said, let's dive into the cards exclusive to the pre-con, starting with the front-facing commander, Gaunty Canny Acquisitor. For two, a black, a green, and a blue. It's an Anthroborn Rogue. Spells you cast but don't own cost one less to cast. And whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, look at the top card of their library, exile it face down, and you can play that card for as long as it remains exiled and use mana of any type to cast it, and it's a 5-5. Five five. Gaunty from Kaladesh got an upgrade here. That Gaunty comes in the pre-con as well, but it is... This one is so much better. All you need to do is hit each opponent and you get up to three cards off the top of their decks in a pod and it's going to be on your side of the board eventually. And then this Gaunty also gains two more colors, making this deck much more flexible than its mono black variation. And that also works well with the second new commander from the deck, Felix Five Boots. For two, a black, a green, and a blue, you get an Ooze Rogue with Menace and Ward 2. It says, if a creature you control dealing combat damage to a player causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, it triggers an additional time, and it's a 5-4. Now, I got into a discussion on social media on this card, and I will repeat what I said there. This is not another Panharmonicon. This card does not give a damn about enters the battlefield triggers. Instead, it is a brand new space where combat damage triggers like the Gaunty Canny Inquisitor are doubled. So we have that kind of thing with Roaming Throne, and that's really the only way to do it, but it is limited to a creature type that you set it to. So you're much more limited, and it's not a legendary creature that can sit in your command zone like this. With both Gaunty and Felix down, you get two cards opponent that you smack each turn, and that's really strong. That said, Felix will have his own deck tech in the near future, but for this video, we're going to leave Gaunty in the lead, and Felix will be his dance partner, doubling up his triggers. And speaking of combat triggers, let's take a look at Dream Thief's Bandana. For two colorless, it's an equipment. Whenever the equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, look at the top card of their library, exile it face down for as long as it is exiled. You may play it and can use mana of any type to cast it. Equips for one. So now any creature gains an additional instance of Gaunti's combat damage and theft ability, and it doubles up with Gaunti, letting you net two cards off the equipped creature when it hits, and if you can somehow get double strike on the equipped creature or one of your creatures gets it with Gaunti around, you can swipe extra cards because it's per instance of damage dealt. So this is really nice. Then next up is a card that made me do a double take, Rocky Soul Reaver. For five and a black, it's a Snake Ninja Rogue with Ninjutsu, three and a black, return, and you know in Ninjutsu, if it's unblocked, you can bounce it and bring this in. Whenever a, one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player create a treasure token and manifest the top card of that player's library and it's a five four manifest means you take their card and you put it face down on your side and if it's a creature you can flip it up for its cost so read this one carefully do you see the amazingness of this card if you didn't spot it here's what i'm talking about a rocky soul reaver does not care if it is the creature dealing the damage in order to manifest any of your creatures can deal combat damage and you get the manifest trigger off of this thing. This card is incredibly strong and I would not be surprised if it ends up being a staple card in any theft style decks in the future. Then we have Savvy Trader. For three and a green, it's a human citizen. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, exile target permanent card from your graveyard. You may play that card for as long as it remains exiled. Spells you cast from anywhere other than your hand cost one less to cast, and it's a 3-3. Three, three. So like with the quick draw pre-con, this is one of our ways, aside from Gonti, to kind of cheapen up our spells, which is a really good idea since we have no idea how expensive the spells we are going to be taking from our opponents are going to cost. Recycling a card from our own graveyard is just kind of a nice side effect of this card, and and I like this variation of a regrowth effect because it dodges discard. There's nothing more upsetting than to use something like an Eternal Witness to try to recover something only to have it ripped away again by a discard spell because you couldn't cast it right away. And then the next card in the deck is Savvy Trader's Best Friend, Thieving Varmint. For one in a black, it's a Varmint. 2-1 Death Toucher with Lifelink Tap, pay one life, add two mana of any one color, but you can only use the mana to cast spells you don't 
own. So again, we don't know how expensive the borrowed spells are going to be. So a mana dork that taps for two is very good for this deck and is going to see some good use, even if you can only use it on the stolen spells. Then next up is a callback to an old spell from all the way back in Judgment, Smirking Spelljacker. For four and a blue, it's a Jin Wizard Rogue, Flash Flyer, that when it enters the battlefield, exile target spell an opponent controls, and whenever it attacks, if the card is exiled on it, you can cast the exile card without paying its mana cost, and it's a 3-3. Three, three. So this is a nice callback to Spelljack in the Judgment set, which was a three and triple blue spell that you could do the same thing. You could exile somebody's spell and then cast it without paying its mana cost. But that card was very hard to cast with that triple blue cost. This is much easier and it's only a single blue pip. So you get a reasonable attacker for a reasonable cost and it has flying to make it easier to go ahead and swing with and get that free cast off of. So even then, if this gets destroyed before you can actually attack and cast a spell, you're still getting rid of a spell for the rest of the game. So it's a win-win either way. We're going to see some sore players that are about to slam a one-turn kill only to have that finisher stolen from them and then turn back at them. And I'm all about seeing that happen. The next card is very good in a multicolored deck like Gante, but not so much in a monocolored deck. And that is Tower Winder. For one in a green, it's a snake with reach and death touch 1-1. One, one, that when it enters the battlefield, search your library and or graveyard for a card named Command Tower. Reveal it, put it in your hand, and if you search this way, shuffle. At worst, this is a 2-drop 1-1 one, one death toucher that can squat down a flyer. But ideally, it's a land tutor specifically for Command Tower to help fix your mana colors. The only way you get a worse scenario is that you've already played the tower. Or if you're playing a monocolor deck, such as like Finn the Fangbearer or other monocolor commanders, you're not likely playing this in the deck. Otherwise, search up what is likely the best land in your entire deck for color fixing and get a 1-1 one, one death toucher with reach out of the thing for the cost of a rampant growth. Then we have the return of a mechanic first introduced Introduced in Gate Crash and has only been printed on one other card since that time, and that is Cypher. The card that has it, Arcane Heist. For two blue, blue, it's a sorcery. You may cast target instant or sorcery from an opponent's graveyard without paying its mana cost. And if that spell would be put into their graveyard, exile it instead. And the Cypher ability says when you cast this spell, you can exile it and code it on a creature you control. And when it deals combat damage to a player, you get to cast a copy of Arcane Heist off of that combat damage trigger. So of course the best way to do this is to put it on an unblockable creature so they can hit over and over again. Now this mechanic was not well loved when it was introduced back then and only a few cards with it are even playable. This one seems pretty strong without the cipher let alone being able to do it over and over again. So this might very well be the best cipher card ever printed. And then the last new card here is Heartless Conscription for six black black. It's a sorcery, exile all creatures. For each card exiled this way, you can play the card for as long as it remains exiled and mana of any type can be spent to cast that spell. Exile Heartless Conscription. Eight mana is a lot, but damn, you get a lot for that investment. If this resolves, even if you never cast the spells off of this and you've, you've just gotten rid of every threatening creature your opponent has for the rest of the game, and the best part is you can just recast your own stuff like the wipe didn't even affect you. So being able to steal your opponent's creature off it is just bonus value. So what am I doing to fix this deck up and make it a little bit better? So let's take a look here. I'm going to show you what I'm taking out of the pre-con and what I'm going to add into the pre-con right afterwards so you can kind of get a feel for what I'm going for here. First off, normally I don't play around with mana rocks, but man, these rocks are terrible and I want to get them swapped out for something much better. So let's start off with Darksteel Ingot. Let's get that thing out of here. A three mana rock that taps for any color is just not good enough in commander these days especially ones that don't have special abilities stapled onto them and this one is just indestructible who cares instead let's go ahead and grab sonic screwdriver from the doctor who decks tap add one main color for three just like the uh, dark steel ingot hat on it but instead it has special abilities you can either pay one and tap it to untap another artifact pay two and tap it to scry or the one that i like on this thing is three and tap target creature can't be blocked this turn so that way you can get one of your bigger creatures to be able to punch through and get a trigger off of things for either Felix to double up or for Gonti to steal things off of. So I just love this one in place of the ingot. We're also going to remove the other really bad one here, Prismatic Lens for two colorless, tap and add a colorless, or pay one and tap to add one mana of any color. It's a it's a filter. It's not even really a mana rock. You're, you're actually mana neutral doing this because you pay something into it to get another mana out of it. And I'm not a big fan of that. 
Instead, we're going to add in Chromatic Lantern. Three mana, all your lands have tap, add one mana of any color, and it taps for any mana of any color. The nice part about this is there are some spells that I'm adding to this deck that don't adjust the colors of your mana to cast the spells, so this will help assist those cards, and we'll talk about those in just a little while. Then there is also one land I wanted to take out this. Again, I don't normally talk about the land bases in decks, but this one was kind of an egregious miss for me, and that is Access Tunnel. Tap, add a colorless, or pay three three target creature three or less can't be blocked this turn this does nothing for gonti himself or felix five boots neither one of them can attack unblocked with access tunnel when they what they should have clearly used and also the name is thematic is rogues passage for it's just a tap out of colorless pay four so it's one more but any target creature can't be blocked this turn so you can actually use this to go ahead and make your stuff unblockable ready to roll and even something as big as gaunty could come crashing in and get you a card for sure now on to the rest of the deck outside of that mana base let's take a look at blade griff prototype five colors three two griffin with flying when it deals combat damage to a player destroy target non-land permanent of that player's choice that one of their opponents control this is very dicey you're gonna have to play heavy duty politics to get this to do what you want it to do and for that reason i'm not a big fan of it here if you know it's great felix can double it up but you're not likely to get what you want destroyed unless it's a threat to the player you just smacked in the face with and smacking them in the face isn't gonna want to let them actually do what you want them to do so instead, we're going to lean into this whole thing where we're casting our opponent's spells with Tasha the Witch Queen. Three, a blue, and a black. It's a four, uh, four loyalty planeswalker Tasha that says whenever you cast a spell you don't own, create a 3-3 three, three black demon creature token. Plus one draw a card for each opponent. Exile up to one target instant or sorcery from their graveyard and put a page counter on it. And minus three, you can cast a spell from among the cards in exile with the page counters on them without paying the mana cost. So this really helps us lean hard into the fact that we're gonna be taking our opponent's spells and casting them so with Atasha down every spell we take and cast we're gonna get a free 3-3 three, three off of this thing and we're gonna be able to draw cards off of this and exile cards from their graveyard so maybe they have something with flashback you don't want them to have it's it's just kind of a nice way to go about it and I like this card much better than the blade griff prototype because we're getting something out of it for the theme of the deck that we're doing the next card is a little more limited, and I, I'm not a fan of the limitation, and that is Thieving Skydiver. For one in a blue, it's a 2-1 Merfolk Rogue with Kicker X flying. It says, when it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, gain control of target artifact with mana value X or less. If that artifact is an equipment, you attach it to the Skydiver. Now, you can steal all kinds of good artifacts and whatnot, but you're going to have to get up in the mana count to actually take anything of consequence, like you know, the one ring. But you're going to have to pay six mana in order to do that. And by then, you might have actually done something else to them and stole other things that are just as good. And we have other theft cards going into the deck, and we'll talk about them in a minute. But for now, I'm going to take this out and we're going to slot in another card that helps us get Gonti hitting and, and taking cards from it. And that is Thassa, God of the Sea. Two and a blue, five, five, God with Indestructible. As long as your devotion to blue is less than five and it's not a creature, at the beginning of your upkeep, scry one. And then one and a blue, target creature can't be blocked this turn. So you can make it so all your stuff can punch on through and you're stealing stuff from your opponents left and right with this thing on the board. It's indestructible, making it very difficult to get rid of unless they're packing a lot of exile removal. It's just a great card to include here. Now, remember when I said we were going to put in some theft cards? Well, we're going to take one out here with Stolen Goods, three and a blue sorcery. Target opponent exiles cards from the top of their library until you exile a non-land. Until end of turn, you can cast that card without paying its mana cost. Four mana is a lot, and for stealing one card that you really have no control over, I'm not a huge fan. If I'm going to dump four mana, I'm instead I'm going to pay the seven mana that I need to play Blatant Thievery for four and triple blue. For each of your opponents, gain control of a permanent they control. So in this way, you know what they got. You know what you're stealing. You're just like, okay, I want that, that, and that, and give them to me. And it's like you're, you're able to do that. And for that extra mana, instead of getting one thing, you're getting three things instead. So this is just a much better card for that. I also like the art. I found out that this was in the Explorers of Ixalan little board game thing they did back then. So I love this art for that card. I'm also going to kick out Plasm Capture from this deck. Green, green, blue, blue, instant counter target spell. At the beginning of your next pre-combat main phase, add X mana in any combination of colors where X is the spell's mana value. I don't like this card because of how hard it is to cast because this is not a green blue deck. This is a Sultai three color deck, making it a lot more difficult 
to be able to cast this on curve to on time and when you might actually need it. And it doesn't really do anything for us other than giving us a small burst of mana. And, and it's one counter spell. It's just like the quick draw pre-con. There's one counter spell in the entire deck. Why? <laughs> if you're going to run Counterspell, you need to run more than one. So it's getting kicked out. Instead, we're going to include a copy of Blade of Selves. It's two colorless. It's an equipment that the equipped creature has Myriad and it equips for four. So what is really cool about this is you can equip this to one of your non-legendary creatures or something that you've stolen from your opponents and you, you know, able to make it unblockable or whatever. Those copies are unblockable. You're going to be hitting them for multiple hits to steal more stuff with Gaunti. You're just, there's just much more you Use for this over that plasm capture so it's going in the deck and then we're gonna have a little bit of a thieving artifact swap first up is the chaos wand that comes in the deck three colorless artifact tap and uh, pay four target opponent exiles cards from the top of their library until they hit an instant or sorcery card you can cast that without paying its mana cost and then put the exile cards that weren't cast this way on the bottom of their library in a random order I'm just not a fan of the whole random, you know, hit type thing. And it's a lot of mana to keep paying into this thing. Instead, we're going to use Helm of Possession and we're going to start stealing their creatures. For four colorless, you can choose to not untap the Helm during your untap phase. Pay two and tap, sack a creature, gain control, target creature for as long as you control the Helm and it is untapped or remains tapped. So the cool thing here is if we steal a creature from our opponents, we can feed that into the Helm of Possession to steal another creature from them and just keep doing that over and over and over again so that is just really good we can just you know steal just keep sacking and stealing and doing all kinds of dumb little stuff with this and i much prefer this over the chaos one our next removal is going to be Void Attendant for two and a green. It's an Eldrazi Processor, two, three with a Devoid. One and a green, put a card from an opponent owns from exile into that player's graveyard and create a one, one colorless Eldrazi Scion creature token that sacks for a colorless. I don't want to put their cards from exile into their graveyard. I want to cast their cards from exile. So the the uses for this are very limited. There's not many things I want. Like I might want to put a, like a land or something I've swiped off of them. In. But otherwise this, ah, no, don't like this. I want it out of the deck. Instead, we're going to run a copy of Dead Man's Chest for one in a black. It's an aura, enchant a creature and opponent controls. When the enchanted creature dies, exile cards equal to its power from the top of its owner's library. You can cast spells from among those cards for as long as they remain exiled and you can spend mana as in, it were any color to cast those spells. So this is just a nice way to get a big burst of exiled cards off the top of the opponent's deck in order to go ahead and get more things to cast from them. And I like this much better. Then we're going to do a little bit of a uh, exile and incident and sorcery from our opponent's stuff. We're going to swap out the Diluvian Primordial that comes in the pre-con. Five blue blue. It's a five five avatar with flying that when it enters for each opponent, you can cast up to one target instant or sorcery card from their graveyard without paying the cost. And if it was put this into their graveyard, you exile them instead. The problem I have with Pri uh, Diluvian Primordial is it costs a lot to cast and I want to be casting my opponent's stuff instead of this. And, it's, and you may run into a situation where your opponents don't have any good instance or sorcerers in their graveyard, making it so this misses when this happens. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and pull in a copy of Grima Soromon's Footman for two, a blue and a black. It's a one for human advisor that can't be blocked. So it fits our can't be blocked theme. So when this thing hits Gonti is around, you're going to get a card off of Gonti and you're going to get its ability, which says whenever it deals combat damage to a player, that player exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile an instant or sorcery card you can cast that card without paying its mana cost and then that player puts the exile cards that weren't cast in this way on the bottom of their library in a random order for me i like this a lot better it feeds into ganti's abilities it gets its uh, trigger doubled up with felix five boots it just does a lot more of what we're wanting to do we're going to be casting it from exile and instead of casting the thing from the graveyard and and you know there's just there's no lockout because you're going to get something for sure out of their deck so if they had nothing in the graveyard with the primordial it does nothing whereas this will likely do something every time it hits then i'm going to remove the copy of edric spymaster of trust from the deck one blue green it's an elf rogue 2-2 that says whenever a creature does combat damage to one of your opponents its controller may draw a card so this has the effect of drawing your opponents to hit each other rather than you so they can get cards but i'm not in the habit of wanting to give them cards Cards, and I would rather lean more into the theft plan of this deck. So instead, we're going to go ahead and use Night Veil Spectre for triple Demir mana, blue or black for those pips. 
You get a 2-3 Spectre with flying. It says when it deals combat damage to a player, that player exiles the top card of their library, and you can play cards exiled with the Night Veil Spectre. Now remember with the Chromatic Lantern, I said there's going to be some stuff in here I'm adding that doesn't differentiate the mana and lets you cast it for any color. This is one of those things where you have to have the color to do it, so the Chromatic Lantern actually helps us use that mana to cast spells off of the Night Veil Spectre. So I really like this here, so we're going to go ahead and include it in the deck. Then we're going to cut out Culling Ritual for two and a black and a green it's a sorcery destroy each non-land permanent with mana value two or less add a black or green for each permanent destroyed this way this thing is way for in my experience is just way too restrictive on what it can blow up it's also going to damage you by blowing up your mana rocks or any kind of low level mana dorks you have on the board this thing just does not work all the time the way we would want it to so i'm going to kick it out of the deck i'm going to rely more on the theft theme of the deck and we're going to include outrageous robbery from murders at karlov manor for x black black it's an instant target opponent exiles the top x cards of their library face down you can look at those cards and play those cards for as long as they're exiled and if you cast a spell this way you may spend mana of any color to cast them so this is just another way to get a big burst of cards for us to just draw off of and i don't think i'm going to miss culling ritual being in the deck if you don't if you want another removal spell there are plenty of other black white removal spells that we could use in this deck other than culling ritual and the last card we're going to cut out of this deck is Ghostly Pilferer for one and a blue. It's a 2-1 Spirit Rogue. Whenever it becomes untapped, pay two, draw a card. And then if an opponent casts a spell from anywhere other than their hand, draw a card and then discard a card. Ghostly Pilferer cannot be blocked this turn now. We're going to be casting spells from anywhere other than their hand, not the opponent. So that doesn't do anything for us. And losing cards just to be able to make this be unblocked when there's other unblockable creatures in the deck doesn't appeal to me all that much. So in this case, we're going to kick this out and we're going to go ahead and include a card that helps with our thieving. And that is Rogue Class for a blue and a black. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of that li player's library face down and you can look at it as long as it remains exiled. Level two on it, creatures you control have menace to make them harder to block. And then level three, paid two in a black and a blue. Uh, you can play the cards you would exile with the Rogue Class and spend mana of any color to cast them. So this just lends itself to what Gonti and what we're trying to do in this deck. So that's why it is included here. Now, as with the other pre-con updates I just did, I'm going to include a couple of cards that are in the pricier side that if you really wanted to use them, they're also kind of on the power level scale of why I didn't want to include them. So let's start off with Expropriate for seven blue blue a sorcery with Council's Dilemma. Starting with you, each player votes time or money. For each time vote, you get an extra turn after this one. For each money vote, you choose a permanent owned by the voter and gain control of it. Exile, Expropriate. So this acts like another version of Blatant Thievery, but it has the extra turn thing attached to it. So your opponents have a choice of damnations. They either lose an their stuff or they're going to let you take multiple turns in order to steal even more stuff but this card can cause people to get extra duper salty and it's about a 20 dollar card right now so i didn't want to include it in the main deck but if you wanted some extra power in the deck this is one way to get it and the other card that i wanted to include as a pricier upgrade is gix yogmoth praetor for one black black three three phyrexian praetor that says whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents its controller may pay one life and if they do draw a card so that can get doubled up by felix five boots to help load your hand up and for four triple black discard x cards exile the top x cards of target opponent's library you may play cards and cast or play lands and cast spells from among the exiled cards without paying their mana cost so as long as you have ways of drawing cards and your hands got a decent size which it lets you do that on his own you can go ahead and steal a bunch of stuff off the top of their deck and cast it and you're casting them from exile so there's things that look at exile cast so that's really cool and we're going to get to use him for that but he's a 20 dollar card as well so he didn't make the cut for the main deck and that's fine but if you want to add some power here you go so with that said that is the grand larceny precon with some updates that i feel the deck needs to be a little bit better better what did you guys think let me know in the comments down below and while you're down there please like share comment subscribe all those things help my channel grow as i'm on my way to my first thousand subscribers and as always thank you guys for watching we'll see you in the next video which is going to be the most wanted pre-con